anything once. You see, paranoid, uh, paranoid um, left-wing Jews don't trust Christians at all. They actually are quite racist. I'm sorry to tell you. Paranoid left-wing Jews are very, very racist in my, in my experience. And many paranoid leftist Jews distrust. When you say to them, but the evangelicals are the greatest supporters of Israel, you know what they say? Oh, yeah? Oh, you wait and see what happens when the Messiah comes. So they even doubt those who support Israel. If that's not a classic textbook definition of paranoia, I'd like to know what is. The trouble is, you know, no. Nope. All right, that's enough on that. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get Ajita after this. Another, another two minutes on that. I would rather read Maximum Immunity in Portuguese than talk about uh, the debate anymore. If this keeps up, I'll get out my Portuguese edition of one of my books, published twenty years ago in, in in Danish, and start to read it in Danish. Can we talk about something else, God? If this news keeps growing, Khomeini joins Coulter in lamenting GOP pandering. Oh, it's getting bad. This is not good. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. But listen to my main point. What is Michael's main point? In case you missed it, any one of the candidates on the stage, including Fiorina, who I'm not a great fan of, would be better than Hillary or the commie, the soapbox commie. Any one of them would be better for this country. I could see any one of them as president. Do I have to read their names? Huckabee would make for a good president compared to what we have in the White House. Scott Walker would, if he put on a little weight again, okay. Okay, I would put an X to Jeb Bush. I wouldn't vote for him. If You know, it's a funny thing. If it's Bush versus Clinton, will I even vote? I don't think I do. I do a protest. It's the same end anyway. Same exact end. If it's Bush versus Clinton, I don't vote. I don't leave the country, but I don't vote. Christie looked good. He, he gained charisma. Kasich is a very smart man. He'd make for a good president. Ted Cruz is a genius. Brilliant. He'd make for a great president, but I, you know, he's got delivery problems. Carson, not, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'd vote for him, but he doesn't have the charisma for the job. Rubio won't vote for him. If he's the candidate, I don't vote for him. He's a stooge of uh, Silicon Valley and special interest for Miami. So who does that leave me with? I hope Trump is the, is the last man standing because I'd like to see him versus Hillary. I'd like to see a real debate. For that matter, I'd like to see Hillary debate somebody already. Okay? Now, again, i got to go back. If you missed it, I'm going to repeat something very important. Two things that I said today that I don't want you to forget, please. The vaccination question that came up. Trump had the smartest answer you could ever expect. I actually cringed before he answered. I was afraid it was going to be all over for him. Given that I know a little bit about the subject, and I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I know a little bit about it. I've studied it. I've read all the literature on it. Uh, I'm in favor of vaccinations up to a point. I know all about the mercury, uh, you know, that was used as an additive and this and that, and that was removed. I know that the studies don't really support a causal link between vaccinations and, and autism. However, there are definite side effects to vaccinations, number one. And number two, uh, there are too many vaccinations. So Trump's answer was quite brilliant. I don't know if we have it, Robert. Do we have his vaccination answer? Yes, no, maybe. We will in a few minutes. Okay, play clip five. I want, I want the people to hear Trump's answer. A backlash against <laughs> vaccines was blamed for a measles Wait, Hold on. I don't want to hear Woodpecker. I, I want you to take Woodpecker off. Can you just play Trump? I never want to hear Woodpecker's voice. Can we just hear Trump? Is it possible? Or we have to have, wood, we have, to have Woodpecker and Trump. Okay, he's got to scrub out Woodpecker to get to Trump. I'll summarize it before he plays it. Trump said, and I was cringing, I was afraid he wasn't ready for this question when, uh, when he was asked the question by, uh, by Judas. I, um, I said, oh God, he's way over his head here. He wasn't. He said, well, there are too many vaccines and I have someone I know in my office whose baby was just given a lot of them and they were very sick, 100% true, 100% true. And he said, we need fewer vaccines, lower dosages over a longer period of time. So then they go to Dr. Carson, who is a pediatric neurosurgeon. He would be a closer expert on this than anyone that I could imagine. And they thought Carson would, would undermine him. But Carson is such an honest man. He's so intellectually honest that he said that Donald Trump is correct. Did you hear that? And that upset Woodpecker. 
He thought that he'd have Carson rip Trump apart. Well, Woodpecker lost all credibility whatsoever at that. He should go back to Rolling Stone, Woodpecker, and report on rock and roll stars and how, much, how many drugs they ingest without collapsing or dying and ask why they have, are they born with special, with special livers. Let's listen to Trump's answer. 25 years ago, 35 years ago, you look at the statistics, not even close. It has gotten totally out of control. I am totally in favor of vaccines, but I want smaller doses over a longer period of time. Because you take a baby in, and I've seen it, and I've seen it, and I had my children taken care of over a long period of time, over a two or three year period of time, same exact amount. But you take this little beautiful baby and you pump I mean, it looks just like it's meant for a horse, not for a child. And we've had so many instances, people that work for me just the other day, two years old, two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. I only say it's not, I'm in favor of vaccines. Do them over a longer period of time, same amount. He's right. The answer was brilliant. Right on target. So, you know, you can make a joke of Trump and you think he doesn't know what he's talking about if you listen to the uh, to these uh, underminers out there, all of these Judases in the media. But the fact is the man is so smart that he can even answer a question on a subject he knows very little about and get it right, as confirmed by a neurosurgeon, a pediatric neurosurgeon. That was, that was his f uh, finest moment. The other thing that I said, the whole thing of looks and Fiorina, what woman is going to not vote for Trump over what he said? To, what Republican woman would now suddenly not vote for Trump over what he said about Fiorina's face? They may not like it, but they, they're not going to disqualify him over that. So he's got a slight misogyny. That's all. A taint. A taint of misogyny. And uh, I think women are kind of used to that. They don't like it, but they know that a lot of men have... You know, those inclinations behind the scenes, behind the curtain. And they figure if they got to take, you know, take it along with the, with the rest of it. But I, um, I still stand by my observation that while women would like men to take them for their brains rather than their bodies, I would think that the only way to, de to discern or determine finally whether Fox's ratings are as high as they are based on the brains of the women or their legs, their lipstick, their hair, etc., is for all the women on Fox to agree to appear in a burqa for a week. A full burqa, head covering, etc., only eyes show, for, for one week. And let's see then if we listen to them for their brains or their looks. Think about it and get back to me. Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Learn. A few things I wish I could have done in my life. One, play the alto sax. Can't do it. Two, uh, fly an advanced American fighter jet in combat in uh, Syria and destroy ISIS in a convoy, the whole convoy, in, in, one run, in one run, one sortie, take out an entire convoy, all the Toyota trucks. When I come back, I have some important things to talk about, including why should we support Israel? It's a very important question that came up on the show. Right now, we have government zero stabbing Israel in the back. Not only do we have no borders, no language, no culture under the Democrats, there's no Israel. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Beautiful time for me every day this time. It means I survived another two hours of a trial by fire. I didn't lose my radio career, <laughs> so far as I know. I still have a large audience, so far as I know. Many affiliates, so far as I know, and here we are. 
So what came up in the last hour was interesting. It's about a, um, let's say a woman out there, we don't have to mention her by name, I don't want to hurt her in any way, who said, how many effing Jews are there anyway? In reference to Huckabee and one other uh, candidate, Cruz Huckabee, who uh, she said, how many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? Then she doubles down and again stabs herself in the heart and says, maybe it's to suck up to the evangelicals. So I'm asking you a question. Why would an intelligent commentator do a thing like this? And the answer was clear to me. She was fuming with jealousy that she's no longer uh, being called to sit up there on the stage and give her opinions after a debate. First of all, um, Roger Ailes has his chorus line. Secondly, you know, after a certain point, there's a shelf life. It happens to us. Time and gravity, you know, it happens to all of us. You look in the mirror, and no matter who you think you are, look at. Go to a museum; it really puts your things in context. And one of the reasons I love going to museums is it shrinks you when you come out. You see these marble statues of powerful Roman, I don't, not emperors necessarily, but regional commanders or regional emperors or re, rather regional leaders, and they're dead. Where are they? And speaking of that, the question is: Israel came up, and why is Israel important to us? Why should we be spending? So much of our capital and so much of our international, uh, let us say, reputation or c world capital on Israel. Why? I'm going to ask you that question. And as I ask you that question, I want to point out something. NASA just released dramatic new pictures of Pluto. You say, what does that have to do with anything? Because I'm, a, I'm originally a science teacher, then a scientist. And we're living in one of the most amazing times in the history of man. What NASA is producing in their flybys of planets is awesome. I sometimes watch the NASA channel at night in order to, to clean my brain of the filth that uh, Hollywood puts out. So the New Horizons historic flyby of Pluto shows icy mountains, fog, and the dwarf planet's landscape. It's astounding. Who would have thought we'd be looking at Pluto in our lifetime? It's almost science fiction when you think about it. And I understand Obama is sending a mission to Pluto to see if he can get the Plutonians to vote Democrat in 2016 to get Hillary over the uh, finish line. I understand he's trying to sign up all the residents of Pluto uh, as Democrat voters in time for the election. It is the savage nation. Pluto, 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 Pluto. It's not even a planet, by the way. Now, it's not, it's not considered a planet anymore wasn't classified as a planet. I don't know what they call it. Please don't call me on Pluto, but it's a fascinating image. I just saw it on Fox News. I linked it up on michaelsavage.com. And we don't know whether Obama is going to send a mission there for uh, the voters yet. Or whether Ch Cheney wants to send an, an oil exploration mission to Pluto to see if he can drill up there. Okay, my friends, why is Israel important to us? I'm not going to talk about the debate anymore. Thank you for the calls on that. We know what it was about. We know that it was a setup. We know that Lance P. Previous is the Judas of the Republican Party. I mean, the real Judas here is really not Jake Woodpecker. Jake Woodpecker is just a factotum. The real Judas is, is the head of the RNC, Lance Previous, whoever he represents. I don't know who his Pontius Pilate is. I don't know who that would be. Colonel Sanders could be his Pontius Pilate. I don't like calling him Pilate. I like uh, I like uh, Pontius Pilot. It reminds me of Pilates, and has some modern context that way. But I mean, the, the real uh, you know the real schlemiel here is uh, Lance Previous. Why aren't the Democrats having any votes? How could you, as a Democrat, you know what I love is Democrats think that they're liberal and open-minded. What kind of party is this that they permit a Yenta from Brooklyn? to say there'll be no debates. How could you tell us that you're living in a better, that you have a better party when you won't even show us who you have? It's unbelievable to me. KSFO Radio, Kim, you're up. What's on your mind, Kim? Um, I am a Democrat. I have been a loyal Democrat all my life, the only one in my family. And I am jealous because Republicans got what they need to, to to learn to make an intelligent vote. In the meantime, I'm I'm disappointed with Hillary. I'm disappointed that there's an assumption <clears throat> that they have my vote. 
also I was a commander.